that blue, blue, white. Eagles came to fight, it's that blue. And welcome inside the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor, Georgia Southern beat writer, and soon to be papa here at the Statesboro Herald. And congratulations uh, coming up soon for you and your wife. I know it's a much anticipated time. Speaking of anticipated time, fall's just around the corner, but it's still technically just the summer just got underway. So we felt like we needed to go and talk to Coach Summers at Georgia Southern about a variety of things. We know that being a head coach, much different than being an assistant coach. Not that those guys have it easy necessarily, but being the head coach, CEO, your summer is filled with a lot of things that maybe it wasn't quite filled with when you were an assistant coach. Yeah, you've got all the little X's and O's to take care of, not only on the whiteboard, but with running an actual program, things that assistants might not get into as much when they're not at the top of the food chain there. Of course, all coaches will meet and greet some fans, but maybe not be a part of those caravans, uh, not a part as much in coordinating all the recruiting efforts that are going on 12 months a year. They never take a day off from that. And then just coordinating how you want to practice to go. And for Georgia Southern, I don't think they have too much to worry about. They've seemed to pick the right guys for the most part in the past, whether it's someone like Willie Fritz, who had 20 years of head coaching experience and knew how to run the program from the day he set foot on campus, to someone like Jeff Munkin, who had been around the program, knew the traditions, but at the same time hadn't been a head coach, had to step into that role. So I think that uh, anybody that's going to walk into this job has been well vetted. They know what they want to do. They have a vision. And I'm sure that uh, Tyson Summers is just the next in that long line. All right. Well, we had a chance to talk with him about getting his feet wet as a head coach and the busy spring and summer that he's had so far. Uh, you know, we've had our guys here for five or six weeks now uh, with a, with our guys in, in summer school, taking classes, going through the workouts with Coach Dorsey. Uh, I think they've done a really, really good job. I've been excited about seeing those guys uh, and, and the momentum they've tried to kind of carry through the fall and through the spring. Uh, for, for us as coaches, you know, certainly been through here and, and been trying to do a lot of planning, get ahead for our opponents in the fall and trying to get ahead for camp, obviously. Uh, and then we've been having to do a lot of our own camps, you know, with, uh, with the satellite camps and the ones we've had on our own campus. And recruiting being what it is today is just uh, it's a different element than it used to be in the summer, particularly in June. And it's, a, it's an opportunity, we feel like, between unofficial visits and camp opportunities to, to really help what we're doing here in our brand at Georgia Southern. Another thing that's kept you busy is going throughout the state uh, on the caravan tour, trying to get your name out there and get you know kind of your philosophy out there how's that been it's been good the caravans are a neat opportunity to interact with fans that you typically wouldn't have the opportunity to uh you know outside of a spring game or a game day atmosphere and uh so i do think it's a it's a neat thing got to go all over the state and spend time with uh, different people on our staff that i hadn't had necessarily a lot of time with some of the coaches from the other sports. I thought that was a, a great opportunity for that. But, you know, it's uh, it's neat to kind of hear the, the fans and what uh, things that are important and the questions that they have. And uh, I think it's a, it's a good opportunity for me to be able to explain myself and how I think. I know uh, when, I, when I go back and I talk to our team all the time, I try to talk to them about what is the intent, why are we doing this? Uh, and I certainly think I got an opportunity to do that while we did the caravans. When you're going out and about and you're getting a lot of questions, I'm sure you're finding the, uh, even though you've been here before, the uh, passion for Georgia Southern football. Yes, sir. It can be a double-edged sword. It can be a good thing because they care, and it can be a bad thing because it's questions you keep getting asked over and over that, that may be a little redundant. Well, sure. They are, uh, obviously, a lot of their concerns are the same ones, and, uh, and so that's... Uh, interesting as, as you kind of you kind of go through it but uh, you know the caravans like I said were a neat opportunity to answer some of those things and and some things uh, you know like I said just to be able to explain why and uh, so I do think that as we went through it and uh, and and got an opportunity to be in front of everybody some of those things got explained I thought they went well you know maybe some people um, didn't think that, but I, I thought they went well. And uh, and so again, any any opportunity that we have as coaches, uh, particularly being the head coach, to be able to interact with those guys and talk to them about kind of where we're headed, where we see our future and, and what we're trying to do, I think is a great opportunity. Of course, Mike, that's just one of the uh, segments that I did with Coach Summers that we'll be using throughout the summer to kind of 
keep people entertained. Well, of course, there would be no Tyson Summers here if it wasn't for Tom Kleinlein, who brought and thought enough of him to bring him in as the next Eagle head football coach. We've been using an interview that I did with uh, AD Tom Kleinlein over the past few weeks as well. Among the things that we talked about was next year, Georgia Southern hosting the baseball tournament in the Sun Belt. And that, of course, is quite a luxury to be able to play that in your own backyard coming up this year. And that's something I really like about the Sun Belt. Whereas in some sports, they just announced that basketball will be in New Orleans until 2019. But with many of the other sports, uh, volleyball, baseball, they shifted around. Everybody has the opportunity to be in line to get their chance to host. Georgia Southern, of course, welcoming everybody into Hanner Fieldhouse last fall for volleyball. It didn't work out great for the team, but I think it was a good event. Definitely exciting to have the best of the best in the conference winning a championship uh, in Statesboro. And we'll get to see that again next year at J.I. Clements Stadium. And I know there's a lot of talk about Hanner and the improvements that can be made and what might change with basketball and volleyball in the coming years. Baseball, you don't have to worry too much about one of the better venues in the Southeast, not just in the Sun Belt. We've seen some nice ones in the last couple of years for the Sun Belt Tournament. I think Georgia Southern will put on a great show. I think that the capacity of the stadium, 3,000 people, I think you'll see a lot of that build. You know Louisiana travels well. Uh, Coastal Carolina, the newest addition, currently in the College World Series. I don't look for them to drop off anytime soon. So not only is the conference getting stronger, some of those best teams will be on the diamond next year. Hopefully Georgia Southern will be one of them. As nice as it is and as great as things go out there, there's always a chance for some improvements. And among the things we got a chance to talk with Athletics Director Tom Kleinlein about was the possibility of some improvements at J.I. I think the first thing that the fans are going to see is the increased number of games with the Eric Russell Classic. I think we're going from two games now to four games. So that there's a, the first event in the new stadium we've already increased participation. Uh, I think from a uh, internal standpoint, you looked at the last week and a half, we've experienced some rain here in Statesboro and our kids are in summer school and we haven't missed a beat in terms of them, what they need to be doing working out and being able to utilize the field to practice on their own. So all those things are, are, are great you know, things for our program. I think uh, as we look down the future, there's opportunities to maybe get high school championship games in here. I'd love to sit down and talk with the State Athletic Association and try to play some Georgia High School Athletic uh, Association games here. Not necessarily the ones that are in Atlanta, but maybe through the private schools or, or one of those organizations. Uh, I think you got to look at what we're going to do uh, as we begin to expand the Statesboro community. Or do we look attractive to start holding outdoor concerts and those kind of things in our stadium? Those are all things that are on the horizon and in the planning stage now. Now doing a uh, campaign, a uh, baseball campaign to raise some money. We're looking at uh, trying to raise some money through alums to potentially put in a video board and some other things to enhance the fan experience here at uh, Jack Clement Stadium. But we think those things are important as we bring events like the conference championship to Statesboro and, and give people in Statesboro an opportunity to see some good baseball. I mean, this is going to be a really good baseball league next year. Well, that'll wrap things up for now. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you again next week.